Morning, Mr. Mayhat. Mm. Coming to I see. Good what? Who are you? I'm Dr. Windfall. Oh, don't be afraid. You're in good hands. Doctor? What happened? You don't remember? Mm. Oh, that's interesting. There's a 46% chance of temporary memory loss in an accident of this type. Accident? Mm. You seem to have some cerebral tumescence. 84% of such cases are caused by forceful contact with a parietal bone. The what? Hmm. Odds are you were bonked on the bean. Ouch! Ow! Oh. One, two, three. Well, we specialize in accident cases here. We had your bed all ready and waiting for you. Ready and waiting? Hmm. You knew I was going to get hurt? Why didn't you warn me? <laughs> we didn't know you were going to be the victim, Mr. Mayhap. But there's always someone having an accident in a city of this size. And we can usually predict the number of beds we're going to need. Really? So how long am I going to be stuck here? The average stay of an accident victim is 4.35 days. Average schmaverage, what's going to happen to me? No, 93% of patients in your condition make a full recovery. 93%? Is that all? Can't you be sure? Hey, am I going to be one of the lucky ones or one of the, uh, other guys? Well, now, in medicine, there's always a certain amount of <clears throat> uncertainty. Uncertainty? Uncertainty? I thought medicine was supposed to be scientific. This is the 20th century. Well, Ouch. sometimes a little uncertainty isn't all that bad. <laughs> if you'd come in here a few hundred years ago, I would have told you without a shadow of a doubt that you were going to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, but nowadays, the outcome is far less certain. <sighs> <clears throat> Anyhow, I'm a scientist, Mr. Mayhap. I don't have a crystal. Ball. Oh, nuts. Chance of this, percent of that, so you're just guessing. Oh, you can call it guessing if you like. I prefer to call it using probability theory. Probability? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Now, you see, you must realize that there's a limit to how accurately we can predict anything. However, about 300 years ago, the first attempt was made to study a truly uncertain subject. It was in 1654, to be exact, and it all started with the wealthy gambler Chevalier de la Marais, who was interrupted while playing dice. De la Marais had no time to roll the dice. So he tried to reclaim the money he had wagered. Good luck. Yes, well, his companions did object. Uh -huh. A dispute arose as to how the stakes should be divided, since the game could not be completed. <laughs> well, now, de la Marais approached the eminent mathematicians Blaise Pascal and Pierre de Fermat and asked if they could propose a solution. The mathematicians struggled with the problem for many years. They realized, you see, that in a game of chance, it is impossible to tell who would win before a game is completed. So all you can do is guess. Ah, uh, not exactly. Imagine, for example, that a gambler using a pair of dice needs a total score of five in one toss to win the game. Okay. Now, each of the dice can land in one of six possible ways. Uh -huh. Now, since he rolls two dice, there are six times six, mm. that is to say 36, possible combinations. Right. Now, of these 36 possibilities, there are four combinations which add up to the winning five. Uh -huh. That means four possible ways to win the game as opposed to 32 possible outcomes in which he will lose. So I guess you can assume he's going to lose. No, 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 that's not entirely fair, not at all. You see, he still has a chance of winning. In fact, 
if you were playing a large number of games and this same situation came up each time, he would win four out of every 36 times. Mm. Now, that works out to about, ooh, 11% of the time. Now, we call this his chance or probability of winning. Probability, yeah, but you don't know for sure he's going to win exactly four out of every 36 games. I mean, suppose he has a lucky streak. He could win every time. Ah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, now that 11% probability is an estimate of how many times he's going to win in the long run. Uh, how accurate it is depends on how many games he really plays. Uh, if he only plays a few games, his actual percentage of wins may be quite different from the theoretical calculation. But theoretical. if he plays many thousands of games, the actual results will match the probability estimate quite closely. Uh, but either way, the probability is still the best estimate you can possibly make with the information you have. Best estimate. <laughs> yes. Ah, now, that's why you see the mathematicians propose the following solution to the problem of the interrupted game. The gambler's share of the stakes in an interrupted game should be proportioned to his chance of winning. Now, in this example, the gambler who has been called away had an 11% chance of winning the entire stakes. He may, therefore, take 11% of the pot. The others may then continue the game without him. Mm. You see, this system for analyzing an uncertain situation is now known as the theory of probability. Theory? Probability? That's it. Instead of trying to guess what will happen in one particular instance, which may be impossible anyway, you calculate what would happen in a large number of similar situations. Mm. Large numbers mean predictability. You see, in general, individual events or small numbers of events are difficult to predict. Mm -hmm. The larger the number, the more accurate the prediction. The mathematician Jacob Bernoulli called this the law of large numbers. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but what's all that got to do with me? <laughs> uh, you. Yes. Uh, yes, well, you. <laughs> at, at the time, Pascal and Fermat felt that they were merely creating a tool to aid gamblers, little realizing that the theory of probability would have applications in all the sciences, including medicine. Ah. Suppose I'm trying to decide what kind of treatment to give you. <laughs> Please. All right. Different people react differently to different medicines at different times. Knowing the results of various treatments on thousands of previous patients can help me pick the treatment that gives you the best chance of improvement. Yeah, but it's still chance. Well, there's still some chance involved. And the trouble is, you're a living organism. For the time being, and I hope to stay that way. In certain ways, uh, living organisms... Uh are like dice. Huh? I'm not dice. Yes. Don't you see? They are notoriously unpredictable. Well, thank you. They may come and go as they please. They may even change their minds. The behavior of individual organisms is highly uncertain. However, the overall actions of a large number of living beings, like the results of a large number of dice rolls, are comparatively predictable. Mm. Let me give you an example. The events leading up to an individual accident may be very peculiar. Now, let's see. According to the accident report, in your case... Talk about a freak accident. I mean, I bet that wouldn't happen again in a million years. Mm, yes, well, perhaps not in just that way. But remember, no one expects to have an accident. I'll say. Yes, if accidents could be predicted accurately, people could stay in bed and avoid them like you are now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, the total number of accidents in a large population is remarkably consistent. Every year, about 15 and a half people out of every thousand will have an accident. Oh. Once again, large numbers turn the unpredictable into the predictable. And that's how we know how many beds to have ready. Gee, 
But where does that leave me? I mean, uh, I'm an individual. There's only one of me. It, it's, it seems, it seems kind of dangerous. <laughs> it's the little uncertainties that make life interesting, Mr. Mayhem. Oh. Well, for the most part, we've given up the idea that science will someday be able to predict everything. That does make life a bit... Uh, Exciting. <laughs> but applying the theory of probability, we can usually pick a safe route. In other words, there's always safety in numbers. <laughs> yeah.